In this video, we're going to discuss the change in various thermodynamic quantities upon mixing of a solution. So let's start off with just our Gibbs energy, which we like very much in chemistry. So in this case, our delta G is going to be delta G of mixing, or delta mixed G, as you'll often see that subscript written. And this is going to equal the Gibbs energy of the solution, which is going to be a function of temperature and pressure, as Gibbs energy always is. But in addition to that, it's going to be a set of, a function of the set of the number of moles of every particle, so or every type of particle. So if there's two components in the solution, it's N1 and N2. If there's five, it's N1 through five. It's a function of however many variables of number of moles there are in the given solution. And then that is then subtracted with uh, sum over all of those components as well of the Gibbs energy of the pure liquid of component I at that number of moles of its component, Tp number of moles of component I. So it's just that you take the Gibbs energy of the pure liquid in that given amount, do that for all the liquids that you're going to mix together, mix them together you get a new Gibbs energy and so the different the delta G of mixing is just the difference in energy between those two states the solution state and the aggregate of all the individual uh, liquid states okay so we can also write this in another way we can say that our delta G of mixing is equal to the sum over all of the particles all the different types of well, some of all the components, I should say. Components is different types of chemical species that appear in the solution. Number of moles of that species in the solution times the chemical potential of that species in solution. Mu sol, the molar Gibbs energy in that solution times the number of moles gives you the Gibbs energy of that given component in solution. And then we subtract from that sum over all of these again, number of moles of, of that component of the chemical potential of it in a pure liquid. Okay, and we remember from previous videos that if we have an ideal solution, which follows Raoul's law at all concentrations, at all compositions, at all mole fractions of every component, that the chemical potential of a component in solution is equal to the chemical component of that chemical potential of that pure component as a liquid plus gas constant times temperature times natural log of the mole fraction of component I in solution. And remember this is only valid if it is ideal. If I could write, that would be fantastic. If ideal. These two lines are general. They do not have to be ideal to obey the first two lines. Okay, so the chemical potential, we just substitute in uh, chemical potential of the solution up here. We notice that uh, the chemical potential of the liquid appears on both sides now once we substitute this in. So after you subtract out and do the algebra, what you'll come up with is the energy of mixing for an ideal solution, the, the Gibbs energy of mixing for an ideal solution, is the gas constant times temperature times a sum over all of the components of that solution, number of moles of that component, times natural log of the mole fraction of that component. Okay, so that is our Gibbs energy of mixing for an ideal solution of however many components we like. For the most part in this series, we're considering just binary solutions. So we just have two components here. I would be one and two. Okay, what about our entropy of mixing for an ideal solution? Well, that would be equal to, we know that the entropy is just the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature the negative of that anyway. So if we take our Gibbs energy of mixing for an ideal solution and we take the negative of that differentiated with respect to temperature, 
being sure to hold the pressure and number of moles of every component equal. Then we'll get our entropy of mixing. And luckily for us, uh, this value is linear in T. So if we differentiate with respect to T, it's just going to be T dropping out and we're going to get the rest of it. We're going to get R times this sum. So our entropy of mixing for an ideal solution is just going to be equal to minus R times sum over I, number of moles of component I times natural log of mole fraction of component I. And that's our entropy of mixing. So that's simple enough, followed straight away from the Gibbs energy of the mixing. We just differentiated that. Okay, so some other components that we're interested in. How about the change in volume with when we mix? So the volume of a system we know is just the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to pressure. So if we differentiate the Gibbs energy of mixing for an ideal solution with respect to pressure, holding temperature and number of moles of every component constant, what we're going to get is we see that there's no pressure anywhere in here. None of these values depend on pressure in any way. So the derivative with respect to pressure is just going to give us zero. So for an ideal solution, our volume change of mixing is going to be zero. So that's very convenient. If we mix together two ideal solutions, or we mix together two liquid components, and then they form an ideal solution, the solution will not have any different volume than just the sum of the volumes of each of the pure liquids that we poured together in order to mix into the solution. And lastly, we're interested in the enthalpy of mixing. So from another formula that we have for the Gibbs energy, we can say that the Gibbs energy change of mixing is equal to the enthalpy change of mixing minus T times delta S change of mixing. Need to put that subscript before. Delta mix S. But we've seen here that the the Gibbs energy of mixing is just minus T times the entropy of mixing. So delta G of mixing equals minus T delta S of mixing. So these two are equal to each other. They just cancel out. And then you're going to have delta, the delta H of mixing is just going to be zero because this term and this term are equal. Subtract them out. You're left with zero. So our final result and this is in the case if in the case that they're ideal, if they're going to be equal. This this was general, but once we plugged in those specific values, it's just for ideal solutions. So I'll just be rigorous and make sure to put the ideal subscript there. So the enthalpy of mixing for an ideal solution is going to be zero. Okay, so let's take let's take a few uh, more notes and look at this. In, a, in some detail and think about why this might be the case. We know that the volume change of the mixing of an ideal solution is zero. That's because for ideal solutions, we said that one of the criteria for molecules which are going to be ideal, that are going to obey Raoul's law at all concentrations, is because those molecules are going to have similar size and shape. So those molecules are similarly sized to one another. So when you mix them together, it doesn't change the volume uh, too, too much because they're approximately you know, equal. It's, you can kind of exchange one for the other. They're not very different in what they look like. And then similarly, on the same kind of train of thought, why is it that the enthalpy of mixing is zero? So that means we'll remind ourselves that enthalpy is the heat, which is, which is uh, exchange during a constant pressure process. So the enthalpy of mixing for an ideal solution is zero because in order for a solution to be ideal, the molecules should have similar intermolecular interactions. 
So component one and component two should have interactions with each other, which are very, very similar to what component one has with itself and what component two has with itself. So there's not any heat or any kind of change in the status of the solution because if it sees a molecule two now instead of molecule one, it says, oh, well, I'm interacting the same way because in ideal solutions, that's what, that's what happens. They're just very, very similar in what their molecular interactions are. And they're about the same size and everything is just great if the solution is ideal and we see all these nice kind of calm relations that fall out and we can understand pretty well what's occurring at the molecular level and why that is the case.